welcome back to another First Impression Friday. As you can see, we are going to take a look at Alice and Co. patterns. I'm excited to share this one with you guys based on the quick little bit of research that I did about them. They have a cute little story and what looks to be a really, really great company here. I do want to address my voice. I apologize. I've been working very hard all week to get my voice back and this is the best that it is. <laughs> so I hope that it's not too um, annoying for you. I know that's a little nasally, um, just doing my best. So um, I hope that you guys will stick around and bear with me. Okay, so Alice and Co. I first want to call your attention to their About Us page, which is so cute. It's not very long, but you can see they have this really adorable photo here. And as it turns out, Alice and Co. is a mother-daughter team, Alice and Lilia. And Alice has a ton of experience as a designer, pattern cutter, and teacher. And she has like a little fashion travel blog, blog which is really cool if you want to check that out. And then Lilia, her daughter, has been making her clothes, like basically her whole life, as you can imagine. And she works at it as a textile conservation display specialist at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. How fun is that? Um, and she also has her own personal blog here as well. So these two women both seem like they are fully immersed in fashion, fully immersed in sewing. And so I expect really, really great things from them. Um, along here in their little sidebar, they have a lot of really cool stuff. First of all, their website is in French, if you prefer that, which is just something you don't see very often. They have a whole page on free patterns and pattern hacks, and they do online classes, and they have this little downloadable like ebook, which is really cute. And then they also have this uh, little section here, which is their favorite fabric stores in London, I think. And then this advent calendar is such a cute idea. Um, basically what they did is they released, um, you know, leading up to Christmas time, uh, different either add-ons for their patterns or different patterns altogether, like for a little stocking. This one's a cocktail. It's nothing to do with sewing at all. Um, but they also have hacks in here. Um, so if you have any of their existing patterns, um, you might have some of, uh, there might be some hacks in here for you as well. I just thought that was a really cute way to kind of present you know, hacks in a fun, unique way. Um, so I wanted to call your attention to that. It speaks to their brand a little bit. It speaks to kind of out, how outside the box they are, how fun they are, and stuff like that. Um, there's also a spring coat sew along um, going on if you want to check <laughs> that out. I'm going to try my best to not cough all the way through this. But um, let's check out some of their patterns. Um, some of them are in French, as you can see. So we're going to skip over those because I just I don't know how to speak or read French. Um, so we'll just look at the English patterns and this is the intrepid boiler suit. <clears throat> All right. The intrepid boiler suit is a top to toe cover up that can be made as practical or glamorous as your heart desires. The design features a shoulder yoke, classic shirt collar and slightly tapered leg. The suit fastens with a zip down the center front while the waistband casing allows you to cinch in the waist with a belt or elastic. Okay. You can certainly do more than fix the boiler in this suit. And we guarantee once you have this on, you won't want to wear it anything else. So then there's a, a section on fit. Loose fitting but not baggy. There's a seam around the waist to allow for adjustments to the length of the body. Vital for ensuring you can sit down comfortably. That's true. Then there's variations, as many as you'd like, shorten or omit the sleeves for a pinafore version. Once you have the right length in the body, you can join the pieces and cut in one for a more streamlined look, meaning eliminate the waist seam. Um, experiment with fancy top stitching or flat filled seams or full industrial chic. Button front, you can do the button front hack. Um, ideas on pocket customization here. And then this is intermediate or confident beginner. <coughs> and then for fabric, they recommend uh, lightweight denim or cotton twill. Um, unless you want to go like a little bit more tailored and you can do a light wool or wool mix. Like wool and viscose or wool and crepe. Uh, pinstripe or houndstooth. Go glamorous and heavyweight silk or poly crepe or cozy up in a firm wool jersey or ponty version. Avoid anything too stiff or bulky. All right, and then here is your fabric requirements and your haberdashery, which is one of my favorite 
selling terms that we don't use here in the U.S., and I wish we did, but it's another word for notions. I'm going to need a zipper and then elastic if you want that. Okay, and then about their size range. So this is a 6 to 22. What I can um, tell you about their size range, this is the size chart, is that it originally was 8 to 18, um, and they're working to convert them. And this is the part that I think is so interesting. Not only are they converting them to extend into the higher uh, size range sizes, but they're also extending down too into the lower size ranges, which is really just something that I don't think a lot of people are considering is that size inclusivity includes both sizes of both, you know, both sides of the size range. So it's for the petite girls as well as the full figured girls. And so I think it's really cool that they didn't just extend their sizes up, but they're also thinking about some of the more petite girls too, um, who before couldn't wear their patterns because they were all too big. Um, so the struggle is real, whether it, a pattern doesn't fit, whether it's too big or too small, it, it's all the same frustration. So, um, so they have one, two, three, four, five, six patterns in the full size range. And then I think that leaves, I think there's like 11 patterns. So maybe four or more that are still in the limited size range, but they are working to update all of them. And they're actively seeking testers who are a UK size six or um, in the 18 to 22 range. So get in touch if that is you and you want some free patterns and you want to test out um, their kind of new size blocks. Okay, so that is their bit about sizing. Here's the chart. Um, you can see that the bust goes from, when you include the extended size range, the bust goes from a size, uh, from 30 inches up to 49 inches. And from all the petite girls that I spoke to, a 30 inch bust was about, average for what they had. I reached out on Instagram and asked um, if anyone was a double zero, zero or two in ready to wear, if they would share with me their, uh, their measurements. And a 30 inch bust was kind of like the most common, or at least like the average of what I saw. I very rarely saw anyone in the high 20s. Um, and so I, I told myself just like a mental note that a 30 inch bust would be a good inclusive size range when you're considering the lower end. And then in speaking to, um, some of the plus size community, they say that a 58 inch hip is what would be considered inclusive. So this, even with their extension, um, doesn't go all the way, um, to what is considered like fully inclusive, but certainly it is a lot better than whenever they stopped at 18. When they stopped at 18, even I wouldn't be able to wear their stuff. So, um, they are including, um, I guess what would be up to, um, like four, 16, 18, I guess in ready to wear. So they're going from like a double zero zero up to 16, 18 ready to wear conversion. They just aren't in the full women's sizing. So there's that. That's all I have to say on their sizing. So we'll just kind of keep this in mind um, as we look through the rest of their patterns. I also do want to point out that they are also using colors instead of uh, pattern size numbers. I feel like we've seen a couple of indies doing this here lately. Um, so for me, I would be grading between an orange and a purple, I guess. Mm, probably, or I don't know, depends on the pattern, but orange to navy, and that's kind of a big jump um, to go from a bust to two or three sizes bigger for the hip. So it just depends on the, the design and how much ease is in the hip already. But um, if you're trying to get an idea, if you're a pear shape, <laughs> how they do with curves, I'm going to say not great, but not the worst I've seen. <laughs> it's definitely doable and definitely something that I can work with. Okay. So that is it on sizing. Let's take a look at some of these photos. I love that they get nice and big. They also have, I think exclusively illustration. So we're not going to be able to see this like on a person, but you can tell that this is modeled on a person. And then the, the person is just drawn in. Do you know what I mean? Like this is a 3d model of a, this is a person underneath this. And then they just took out their head, hands, and feet, and drew them in. 
So in a way it's on a person and in a way it's not, um, it's an interesting choice, but can't really see the yoke here, but you can see this very large collar. I think it's just a one piece collar, no collar stand. Here's the center front zipper. They've got like <laughs> a really interesting little elastic belt here. Um, simple sleeve, no pockets on this one. Like nothing really fancy going on with the leg either. Here's the back. Here's the back yoke. Um, there also might be something here, right? Y'all see that seam? And then there's the elastic again. These pockets are very low, very, very low. Like they should be way up here. So that is interesting. Um, I always just put, I hardly ever use the pockets recommended, the pocket placement recommended by the pattern. But let's see, classic collar, front zip, now with added pockets. So you can do a front patch pocket here. And then you can also do these little, I love these pockets, fit loose, but not baggy, add the belt, roll up the sleeves, slightly tapered leg. Oh, and here's a line drawing. So nothing on the sleeve. I don't know what that was that I saw before, but this looks really chic as a line drawing. Am I right? Like way more chic than it did in the previous photos. This looks really tailored and clean lined. Whereas this just looks a little bit sloppier. I don't know. I guess because they didn't really draw in like the bagginess of the bodice. But you could certainly streamline all this and take out a lot of that excess length um, if you wanted a more tailored look. Oh, and then here it is. And I guess it's kind of like a, not a lightweight fabric, but definitely liked her weight different kind of belt thing happening. Oops. Oh, that was the last picture. So yeah, we don't get to see them on like a bunch of different body types or anything like that. Um, I don't even see where they have like, I know they have an Instagram, but I don't know that I see like a hashtag, like use a C intrepid or whatever. So you could find them. I mean, they're not hard to find the hashtags, but you might have to like poke around a little bit to find them and see the, see this on like different types of bodies. Maybe that's something that they'll get into now that they're extending the size range a little bit too. All right. So that was the first one, the boiler suit. This is the Adele apron dress. Cute. Our apron dress has all the utility chic of an apron, but fits like a dress. The unique paneled wrap around design incorporates discreet bust waist and hip shaping to accommodate all body shapes and sizes. The pattern comes together quickly with options for extra flourishes, such as top stitching, inseam buttonholes, inseam buttonholes, that's cool, and inset patch pockets. This practical design that looks just as cool behind the kitchen counter as it does sitting at a bar stool. What are you waiting for? Time to stir up your version. Okay, fit. Hidden gentle bust shaping banishes the risk of a floppy neckline and gaping underarm. That's interesting. Um, giving uh, Alice's experience <coughs> in, excuse me, in pattern making and all of that, the fact that she would call out a floppy ne neckline and gaping underarm as a common problem for these types of dresses and almost immediately, you know, say that ours doesn't have that, I think speaks to kind of how her mind thinks about pattern drafting and how her mind thinks about clothes and how they should fit and all of that. So that's kind of cool. The dress is semi fitted through the waist and skims over the hips with a generous overlap at the back to give room for movement without risk of indecency. The panels make it easy to adjust the fit to suit your personal body shape and desired style. The fit can also be adjusted through the waist according to how you tie it up, double round or a cinch, Oh, double round for a cinch or tie at the side for sophistication and room for dinner. The pattern is drafted to sit at knee length with lengthened and shortened lines included. Some variations include, and I think we'll get into some of this here, but um, how the straps can be attached and tied. Uh, straight, cross, twisted, halter for zero notions. Um, omit the buttons and just use fabric straps. Alternatively, make a feature of some braces clips, which I think might be like um, overall hardware, maybe. 
or fancy buttons, or for the lacy option, just raid your collection of brooches, badges, and pins. There are also lots of ways to tie the dress around the waist for different looks. All right, beginner friendly with options to show off or learn more advanced sewing skills. And then fabric, they are they are suggesting denim, cotton twill, or linen. Lighter weight cottons will also work well for summer. Wool suiting or quarter would be very smart for a wet a winter pinafore. For a luxurious, slinky look, try a heavy crepe. All right, 6 to 16, and then 16 to 22. Um, <coughs> so 6 to 22, that's the full size range. And then you need fasteners, interfacing, and ribbon. You can read through all of that. But um, all right, let's take a look at it. So we have, it looks like a princess seamed dress with like a straight across neckline, pretty thick straps. And it looks like they even did some decorative stitching here, but I also really like these pockets that stretch kind of across the um, high hip. That's really nice detail. And then here's the back. You can see what they mean. It truly is like a full coverage apron. It wraps around the back. Here's where it um, overlaps. Um, the other side comes down to here. So it's over here. So all of this is double layered. So that's what she means about the no risk of indecency. This reminds me a lot of the Burnside bibs in a way. I mean, they don't have like a crossover, but... Um, the way that you do the straps, how it can be so different. It's really cute in like a blue denim. Here's her calling out the the um, pockets. And a little side bow is really a really cute idea. I like this pattern a lot. A lot, a lot. Um, cute. I like, I think I would even like it without a shirt underneath. Is that like crazy. I don't like how this is gray. I don't know why it's doing that, but all right. Waist tie hole in the left side back panel seam ties over front. I'm not so sure I'm fully going to understand what all this means right now, <laughs> but are this okay. The reason why it reminded me of the Burnside bibs is because I thought that the waist tie and shoulder straps were connected, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think they're two separate things. So let's talk about the back only. You can do this crisscross. Oh, wait, here we go. Back. Okay, okay, okay. Waist tie options. I see, I see, I see now. Um, so you can do the, you know, crossover tie in the front. Um, this is tie on the side. I'm not fully, I don't fully understand the differences between all of these, but again, you can read through them. And then the back strap options, you can do crossover buttoned, crossover stitch down, straight stitch down, halter neck, or twisted crossover buttoned. Oh, that's cute. Um, something else to think about is you can always put these buttons in the inside of the dress and then wear it any way you want. Um, yes, you would have buttonholes at the end of your straps, but I mean, would you really notice those? You know what I mean? And you would be able to do a bunch of different options. Oh, but wouldn't you have to like make them make the length adjustable? Okay. So that might work if you put multiple buttonholes along the end, you know, at three different locations, one for the crisscross, one for the straight and one for the twisty. You wouldn't need to worry about this one at all. Um, so just some things to think about, about how to make it more versatile, I guess. And then the front strap options, these are the ones that come up and tie here. We've got buttoned, we've got thread through and knotted. That's another option for the back. You could do the thread through and knotted. I mean, you'd have to do it on your, you have to do it either on yourself, like turn the back of the dress to the front and then tie it or have someone do it for you, but you could do it. Um, and then this is like the overall buckles and then this is stitched down. So lots of options with the strapping. It's quite cute. I really like it. I really like this one a lot. And at 12, 
pounds. <laughs> I think I've finally gotten that right. Um, that makes it, is it the pound a little more than a dollar now? So this would be like $15, US dollars, something like that. 13, 15, something. Okay, next up. Ooh, look at this cutie. This is the regatta dress. The regatta dress is easy to make, fun to sew, and a delight to wear. A frock as suited to romping through a field of wildflowers as sitting, eating oysters in a seaside bistro. This is my kind of good time. Field of wildflowers and then oysters at a bistro? Yes. The fully lined bodice has a nifty neckline threaded through with ribbons which tie at the shoulders to create pretty straps, buttons all the way down the back, and you know I have my thoughts about that, but um, all the way down the back giving a bold vintage feel. The skirt is a simple gathered rectangle with optional patch pockets. The dress is drafted to be very loose through the bust and waist to give a relaxed look. The final bodice shaping is determined by how you arrange the neckline along the ribbons. If oh okay, I see what they mean. It's like a drawstring kind of. If you like it, if you like a closer fit through the bust and waist, it's easy to take in the bodice down the side seams or cinch in with the belts. You can do um, a fuller skirt or a slimmer skirt depending on how big your rectangle is or new pleats. Instead, you can do a petticoat underneath. You can also use the skirt instructions provided with the pattern to drop your own cute button through gathered skirt just leave off the bodice I guess that's what they're saying um if you've already made a few simple outfits this will be a great next challenge quite a few buttons and buttonholes so if you're not an expert now you will be by the time you finish dress weight cotton seersucker lightweight denim cotton shirting or an African wax cotton this is a dress crying out to be made in a vibrant print okay and then fabric requirements and ribbon, buttons, interfacing, and then the full size range. All right. So this is what she's talking about. The uh, ribbon is threaded through the front, kind of like a drawstring. So if you let this looser, you will have a looser fitting bodice. If you tighten it up, you could have one that sits up higher. <coughs> Just depends on your own personal style, which is kind of nice that it's adjustable. Um, it's still going to be pretty loose fitting through the waist, which is why she said you could always just add a belt. Or you could make one out of the same ribbon um, to have like a coordinating thing happening there. And then a full, almost midi length skirt with the side patch pockets again. And then here it is in the back. Now my thoughts about button back dresses are... How do you sit down in them? I mean, I know how, but like, is it comfortable to sit in them? Has anyone ever broken a button by sitting like on a wooden bench at the bistro? Um, do the buttons get stuck in wire chairs? Do they leave marks in your car's leather? Like the practicality of a button back dress to me is not there. Um, so I would just swap this out for either buttons up through the waist and then a zipper down through here or zipper all the way and do no buttons or I don't know if you don't need the buttons to get in it because you um, adjust the ribbons then maybe just buttons through here um, just tacked on like uh, non-working buttons and then skip these yeah, I just, I don't know about a button back. If you, if you had the reservations that I have before and then you made a button back and realized that you were stressing out about it for no reason, <laughs> let me know that. Um, because that is what has kept me from making patterns like this before. Super cute in the sailboat print. Love that. And then there's the back. I mean, it is cute. I just, I don't want to get stuck and I don't want it to like ruin <laughs> my car or I don't want to ruin the dress either you know um, but it's a really cute idea all right gathered neckline ribbon straps relaxed bodice roomy pockets buttons up the back gathered skirt make as full as you'd like all right there we go that is regatta next we have the jump up suit 
The our super quick to make jump up suit is designed for two way stretch fabric. It is sleeveless with a fitted bodice and wide legs. It looks great on its own or over a fitted t-shirt or blouse. The neckline is an unusual square with a nip at the front and a V at the back. What's a nip? This? Okay, a little notch. Notch equals nip. Um, no need for a zipper. Just shimmy in and join the party. Fun fact, a jump up is an impromptu Caribbean get-together with some beers, barbecue, and music. We can't think of a better outfit for such an event. Close fitting through the bust, waist, and hips with wide straight legs from the hip down. Vertical, The vertical darts from bust to hip can be easily adjusted to make a looser or tighter silhouette. Are we talking fisheye darts? Because y'all know I love me a fisheye dart. It would be easy to change the neckline. Just remember, it's your only point of entry and exit. Cut off at calf or thigh to make culottes or some replace suit. Jazz it up for cocktail hour with a fancy belt. Cute ideas. Easy peasy. If you've never made an all-in-one before, this is a great place to start. This was, this was a first jumpsuit for many of our testers, and we have since christened it the Jumpsuit Converter. Just make sure you choose a nice stretchy fabric with a bit of weight to it. If you have an overlocker or serger, now is the time to use it. Okay, fabric. It is essential to use a stretch knit fabric for this design, preferably one with two-way stretch, meaning it stretches both lengthwise and widthwise. Look for one with some weight to it so that it won't lose its shape easily. Test it. Test it with your fist. Test it with your fist? It should spring back into shape. I don't, I think there's a typo in there somewhere. A medium weight cotton, and I'm, I immediately started thinking of um, the mid-weight cotton jersey from Stylemaker Fabrics would be great for this. It is solid colors, though, so if that's not your jam, then maybe not. Um, wool or man-made fiber jersey knit or rib knit would be perfect. Some lycra content will help retain the stretch. A Ponte de Romo would be an excellent choice as it's a stable knit that's easy to sew. So Ponte de Roma is like the drapier, lighter weight of Pontes. So I don't know that all Pontes would work, especially that would be a little bit hot, but I can see why they recommended that. But Ponte de Roma, like you have to specifically look for this one. But like I said, the midweight cotton would be really pretty too. And then no notions, just some thread, and then it is in the full size range. Let's take... <laughs> Excuse me. Let's take a look. Okay, really hard to see what's going on here, especially with this one, um, other than the square neckline with the little notch. It's like a little bit grown on the shoulder, it seems. And then the wide leg is nice. The fit looks exceptional. Nifty neckline, wide leg, stretchy, darts to shape waist, no zip required. <coughs> oh, here's the V back. Okay. So possibly a little close fitting through the bum for my taste. I, I'm assuming they have different body types, um, but maybe they're the same sample size. I'm not sure, but it's definitely, she's filling this out a lot more than she is. And I prefer the look of this. I don't know. This, this looks... These look like two different legs, and I know they're not two different legs. It's just that her bum is pulling up some of this to accommodate for the extra bumminess. <laughs> um, but I would want to make sure when I made mine that it fit more like this. Yes, yeah, so here are the fisheye darts. Obsessed with those. Obviously, you can even add more. You could do a second one on each panel for a total of eight. Um if you wanted to get a super cinched in look, or if you just have a very large um, difference between your waist and hip like I do, um, you could do two of these on each panel. It's really cute and I love the ideas for how to, um, like different variations you can make on it. That's really fun too. I don't feel like these pictures really do it justice. Um, 
I would be looking for them on Instagram for sure to see other people's just to make sure. But other, but things that normally jump out at me with jumpsuits are not an issue here. Like the length, um, you know, I guess the rise is all the way up to the neckline. So um, that's not an issue here. There's not a lot of pulling anywhere. I think the knit fabric is pretty forgiving when it comes to that. I would just want to make sure that most everybody's leg fit more like this and less like this. Um, I think she needs a bit of an adjustment to get the fullness through the back um, to accommodate her little tushy. Okay, so with that, we're on to the Copenhagen coat. Okay, the Copenhagen coat is online, knee-length, easy fit coat, perfect for fall and spring. The coat is designed with roomy patch pockets, one statement button, and a pinked edge. Great for first coat project or if you need a stylish new look for the weekend. Gener I don't know why I said it like that. A generous fit with room to wear over a sweater. Um, designed to be knee length, but it would work just as well as three quarter length jacket, mid calf coat, or floor sweeper. Might look like a big project, but in fact, coat weight fabrics are surprisingly easy to work with. And because there's a generous ease, they're not difficult to fit. Have a go. I love the encouragement there. Choose a double face fabric that doesn't fray, as you will see both sides. So that's important. Examples are boiled wool, felt type wools, melton wool, doe skin, bonded fabrics, faux suede or leather. The more, for the more experience, you can easily patch together some skins for the real deal. All right. And then this is the exact fabric they use. That's cool. Nice big button, iron on tape, coat hanging chain that's cool you don't see that in your haberdashery very often um that is a chain that is sewn into the hem so the coat hangs straight down that's awesome pinking shears or rotary cutter with a pinking blade and then this is the smaller size range and they even say we're working hard to update watch this space okay cool so this is the coat it's all a single layer there's you know, this is not faced. Um, this is the raw edge of the fabric. So keep that in mind. That's what makes this so easy. Um, <laughs> but you've got some really great sewing, some really, really great um, tailoring going on here with this bent. You'll learn how to make one of those. I think the, even these pockets, you'll be able to spend a little bit more time on because you're not so stressed out about the rest of the jacket. But single layer collar, made in double face wool or bonnet fabric, statement button, uh, turn back cuff, knee length, easy to make shorter or longer, raw pinked edge, and deep pockets. Did I say deep pockets? All right, here's the line drawing. You also have these little darts here, which provide nice shaping through the shoulder. And then the collar, I don't know that we could really tell, but it is notched. Um, so... Some really good details in here, especially if you're a beginner. Um, details that you may be overwhelmed by if the coat was also lined or faced or whatever. I also think for whatever it's worth, it would not be difficult to create your own facing for this. Of course, that would be a little bit more advanced, not in, just in terms of sewing, but also in terms of pattern drafting. But it could be done. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so that is Copenhagen. Next, we have white chapel pajamas. The rollers are just too cute. Okay, the white chapel pajamas have a boxy style shirt with a button front. The trousers are comfy but not baggy with a slightly tapered leg and elasticated waist. We provide full instructions for stitching them up with fancy French seams or, or sorry, for a comfortable and professional finish. But don't worry, there aren't too many of them. Room uh, to curl up is slick enough to wear to a pajama party. Sleeve and leg lengths are designed to be slightly cropped. Uh, why not crop the legs and sleeves to create a summer, a breezy summer pair? Add piping for extra prettiness or patch pockets to keep your dreams in. Oh. And then here's a short pattern hack if you wanted to make them into shorts. 
And then the pants couldn't be easier, just three seams and some elastic. The top is an easy introduction to French seams, flat construction, sleeve insertion, and a simple collar. You'll also need to make some buttonholes. Start with the trousers if you're a complete beginner and wear them with a white t-shirt while you complete this shirt. Cute. Classic crisp cotton shirting and stripes or checks or and a bold, audacious print on cotton sateen, soft brush cotton, snazzy paisley silk, the list goes on and on. You'll want several pairs of these, some for sleeping and some for partying. Okay. And then 6 to 22, full size range. They made theirs out of silk. Fancy. And here's your notions. All right. So here we go. We've got the same looking collar as the first pattern, I think. No collar stand, just um, like a one piece collar, four buttons, boxy, cropped. This is hitting like, I don't know, maybe high waist, maybe a little bit higher than high waist. And then they mentioned that the sleeves and um, pants are supposed to be a little bit short. There's the back. Here's our line drawing. <laughs> Curlers optional. Soft shirt collar, cala, elasticated waist. Oh, comfy trousers, loose boxy jacket. Oh, there's a close up of the collar. Pretty. The collar does roll really nicely, so I got to give them that. Um, it's hard to say with collars until you see the pattern pieces, like what is going to happen with them. But I mean, seeing this, I'm getting good impressions. Oh, and they're unisex. Cool. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. That is Whitechapel. All right, next up we've got the Iceberg Dress. A slinky long sleeve dress designed for knit fabrics, striking and comfortable at the same time. This is an extremely quick sew, especially if you have a serger, but don't be put off if you don't have one. It's a perfect base for hacking to your heart's content. The fit is snug at the bust and hips with a bit of ease at the waist. Pattern is drafted as a maxi dress to sit just above the ankle. It's easy to chop to mid calf, knee, or mini as desired. You could also shorten the sleeves to elbow or cap or omit them entirely. Deepen the neckband, alter the neckband, add frills or ruffles. The possibilities are endless. Try one of our free pattern hacks. Neckline hacks, bell sleeve, frill top. Um, easy for beginners, quick for the more experienced. This is a great introduction to sewing with stretch fabrics and learning how to sew a neckband. Stretch fabric, which is wool, cotton, or rayon jersey. Heavier weight fabric would be more flattering and hold the shape of the dress best. Like Ponte di Roma is an excellent choice. Okay. And then the full size range on this. We used two scarves. That's interesting. Oh, wait, which one was that though? It doesn't say whether that's the blue one or the brown one. Yeah, it's like a, is it called a tube? No, a tube dress doesn't have sleeves. You know what I mean? It's just a, like a little bodycon dress. I've honestly never made one of these, never bought one of these. I don't feel very confident in one of these. So, um, but if you have a body type that you feel, I mean, not that my body type wouldn't look amazing in something like this, super comfortable in it. But if you do, it is a really super easy. So that's for sure. Here's your line drawing, which really isn't much. <laughs> Three pattern pieces. Uh, I see a lot of these nowadays in rib knits, which they didn't mention, but like a good stable rib knit would be really good. And then of course you could crop it into a t-shirt too, so. All right, iceberg. Now we have Senorita. The Senorita blouse has a front neck slit and a bow tie. The long sleeves are ruched from wrist to elbow, a detail which will look as good in the boardroom as at the dinner table. Just loose enough to not need a zip in terms of fit. I love that they include this. This is so helpful. Um, the pattern is designed to be hip length, but you could extend it to be a tunic or even a dress. Try out the blouse pattern hack. 
If you've already completed a couple of simple items, this will be a good next step. Slinky silk jersey is ideal for this design, especially one with an interesting print. Alternatively, choose bamboo, synthetic, or rayon jersey, or a fine wool knit. Just make sure it's fine enough to drape. Did I miss that this was a knit dress or knit top? Um, we use silk jersey, and then you just need some elastic, and it is the more limited size range. So the interesting things about this, well, the really only details about this are this neckline and the sleeves. The rest of it is a pretty basic top. I will say this looks a little long in the shoulder um, when I don't think it's intended to be. So I would check that. But this little detail is cute. I really like this detail a lot. So, so easy to do. Once you learn how to do it on this pattern, you can truly do it to any top pattern that you have. Um, okay, pussy bow necktie tucks to create bust shaping. Okay, so instead of having a dart, you've got some tucks here in the neckline. Um, let's go back to the... Okay, are tux pleats? I think so. So I think you pleat this up and then you sew the band on. Maybe that's what happens. And then hip length, ruche sleeves, pull on semi fitted shape. Uh, maybe it's gathered. Maybe it's gathered through here. And it's also hard to tell how low this goes because it's not on a person. Um, but like on her, it doesn't seem that low, but. I don't know, it's hard to say. Oh, they're definitely pleats. Okay. Oh, and then a little zigzag here. You can see some of the construction whenever they showed this close up, which I like. All right. Senorita. And then finally, oh no, next to the last one. Yep, because the other two are bundles. We have the helicopter top and trousers. The helicopter top and trousers are super quick and easy to make with no side seams. Tuck the top into the trousers to give the illusion of an all-in-one, a personal pattern to make again and again in all types of fabrics. The helicopter trousers have pleats at the front and minimal gathers at the back to give a sleek look without the need for a zipper. I wonder for me, how that would be. The helicopter top is a simple shell design, slightly fitted through the bust and hanging loose at the waist. Bust starts ensure no baggy armholes. Shorten the trousers to make nice wide shorts or culottes. Easy for beginners, quick for the more experienced. From floaty Georgette to crisp linen, soft cotton to slinky silk rayon velvet. Whoa. This pattern makes up well in all sorts of fabric. Once you make one, you'll want lots more for every occasion. And then it has the smaller size range and a button and some elastic. All right, so there's elastic in the pants waist. So that makes me think it is a little bit more adjustable than what they alluded to. But we've got a simple, you know, almost like a, Jewelry, jewel neckline, sleeveless, kind of billowy, and tucks into the top. I think that this is the elastic. The red, I think, is the colored elastic. Right? Like exposed elastic is what it is. I actually have um, an elastic. It's like animal print <laughs> that I got, golly, for year one or two of me sewing, like years ago. Um, that would be so cute if you made this out of a black something and then put that, um, it's like a leopard or something. That would be so cute. That's a fun idea. Oh, and then here's the top untucked. That's cute too, I think. You know, everybody's doing like the two-piece sets now. There it is in the back. Again, I haven't seen one single like glaring fit issue um everything looks really really well um drafted so that's good all right oh yeah and no side seams i forgot about that <clears throat> and there's front pockets i missed that 
zigzag or pico edge at neck armhole. Hmm, bust start for neat, wide elastic waistband, silk. <coughs> what was that about the, is it unfinished? Oh, maybe the edges are raw. I don't know about that. I don't know. It's too hard to see and not, I can't get close up enough. Okay, so that is helicopter. And then finally, we have the Komodo triangle dress. The Komodo dress is short and swingy and so easy to make, it can become addictive. The real joy of this pattern is that it has only one piece and a mere three seams. It'll take you longer to choose the fabric than it will to sew it up. The dress is cut on the bias. You guys know I love that. And fitted through the chest and shoulders, sloping gently out to a flattering fullness at the hem. Yeah, this is pretty. Cut a shorter, cut shorter for a swingy top or tunic, or why not try one of our free pattern hacks? The triangle party dress pattern hack with sleeves and ribbon waist tie and the waist coat hack. Well, let's take a look at that I, simply because I don't know what that means. Oh, like a open front cardigan type of situation. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I just didn't know what a waist coat was. My bad. All right. Very easy, very quick for all. The simple shape is just crying out for some statement fabric, a bold print, laser cut out, or striking color. Any weight of fabric will work to different effects. Different fabrics will emphasize the cone-like shape, while lighter weights will give you more swish. All you need is one and a half yards of fabric, you guys. Um, as this pattern is cut on the bias, take a look at the lay plan before you buy. And they used a laser cut cotton one button and loop fastening um and then the smaller size range but this is what i'm always trying to explain to you guys about bias cut can you see this drape that drape is oh how do i say this that is drapier than if the dress were cut on the straight grain so it gives your fabric drape when there might not necessarily be a lot of it there to begin with. And because there's no side seam, this is, fa this is fascinating to me. Cut on the bias, no side seam. There's only a seam up the center back. And it's two pattern pieces. Trim with selvage edge. So they use the selvage of the fabric to finish the armholes. Yeah, look, no front side, no front seam, no side seams, only the center back seam. I mean, how cool is that? I think basically you cut out a rectangle with some holes in it. I'm trying to picture <coughs> what this would look like. And then obviously if you have some experience in finishing necklines and arm size, you could, you could do your own choices there. I don't know if theirs are raw or what, what the deal is, but I mean, obviously a great choice for those fabrics that you don't want to have to worry about matching like plaids. Oh, maybe that pink and yellow plaid that I was talking to you guys about would look really good in this. Especially on the bias, you guys. I might be guy buying the Komodo dress as soon as I click publish on this video. As soon as I get an idea in my head, I just have to do it. Okay, that's the Komodo. All right, so those are, and then you have some um, bundles here where you can get the quick and easy, which is the helicopter, the Komodo, and then the iceberg. And then... You can get the Alice's wardrobe pattern bundle, which I guess is kind of like if you wanted to make a capsule wardrobe, um, you get six of the patterns. Is that not all of them? One, two, three, four. Oh, everything but the, um, oh, not quite all of them, but a lot of them. 
I also love the um, apron dress. I love the jump up suit. I'm interested to hear what you guys think of these. Um, the designs themselves aren't necessarily mind blowing. We talk about this all the time with indie pattern companies. The designs are a little bit basic, but I don't know. I'm getting the vibe here that you will learn exceptional construction techniques, even on basic garments, and that you will be starting from a place of really good, thoughtful, um, drafting. Um, so yeah, I'm eager to give one or two of these a try just to see, cause I feel like, I feel like where the value lies in these, it may not necessarily be like a groundbreaking design, but, um, in the instruction booklet, how things are finished, how things are explained, how you're taught, um, I think would be very thorough. They do have some free patterns, which might allude to some of that. Um, all right. I just downloaded the eye mask to see if it would give me an idea of what their pattern instructions are like. And not necessarily. <laughs> um, it gives you the like fabric that you need to cut on your own. And then it explains it um, about how to stack them up. I guess this is an idea of what their illustrations look like a little bit more hand drawn, which I guess we could have figured from the website um, itself. But yeah, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really elude to what the rest of the instructions are like. So anyways, I just thought I would give it a go, but not really super helpful. All right. So yes, that is Alice and Co. Cannot wait to hear what you guys think. If you've ever sewn their patterns before and you have any insight into what the instructions are like or the finishing or any of that, um, please leave a comment so we can all learn from your experience a little bit. But that is going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye.